In today's True Old West tale, we are going to talk about Pink Higgins, the good bad man, rugged Texan Pink Higgins led a life of traditional Western adventure. He was a gunfighter who murdered more foes than Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, and Bat Masterson combined. He was a cowboy, Indian fighter, trail driver, stock detective, rancher, and deadly shooter. Pink headed a faction in the violent Horrell Higgins conflict in Lampasas County and engaged in combat with Comanches and rustlers. Remember to hit that subscribe button and like the video if you're loving the content. Your support means the world to us. Many of the imagined tales of the Old West feature a wandering hero who battles injustice and rights wrongs without any apparent means of assistance. This has been compared by some to the stories of the legendary knights who were always engaged in some kind of noble quest. In actuality, the Western shootists were just men attempting to survive and get by on the harsh frontier. Of course, some were only sorry and supported themselves by robbing their neighbors. However, the majority of Western gunfighters were either lawmen, gamblers, entrepreneurs, or ranchers. John Calhoun Pinkney Higgins is one illustrious case in point. Pink Higgins, as he was known by both his friends and enemies, was born in 1851 in Georgia. He was only a baby when his family immigrated to Texas and eventually settled near Lampasas, in the central part of the state. Back in those days, people lived on homesteads where they grew their own crops, raised their own chickens and pigs, and raised their own herds of cattle that roamed freely. Pink had helped his father manage the family ranch as a young man and had also been a member of the nearby ranging company that stood ready to defend the settlements from Comanche raids. It was an unforgiving land, full of dangers and hard labor, and young boys grew up fast, often playing the role of a man by the time they reached their teens. Higgins, however, had matured into a young man who had worked hard, mastered his fears, and faced life's challenges head-on. By the time he was twenty, he had twice been injured fighting Indian raiders. Resolving a cow business finally, Higgins struck out on his own, established his own ranch, and started to drive his cattle on the nearby open range. The majority of the country was then public land, and ranchers only had a small parcel of ground on which to build their homes and barns. After being branded with the owner's brand, cattle were released into the wild to fend for themselves. All the neighbors would occasionally come together and start a broad roundup, dividing up the cattle and branding the calves with the brand that their mothers were wearing. Those who are less honorable will, of course, arrive at the ranch early and begin branding calves with their own mark, regardless of the mother's mark. When a cow and her calf were discovered to be wearing different brands, Many gunfights took place. To increase the size of their herd, the Horrell brothers were prepared to accept such risks. They believed that they were strong enough to handle any disputes with their neighbors. Without Pink Higgins, they reasoned. Pink Higgins was an honorable guy who was propelled to action by the Old West bandits who tormented him. Several claimed that Pink drove several of his cows to the Horrell's enclosures and coupled them with a group of calves that were hankering after their mom's milk. This is how the Horrell Higgins feud began. In ranch country, it is typically sufficient evidence, but a trial jury found the Horrells not guilty of a felony despite the fact that the calves were clearly Higgins. Higgins came to the conclusion that the jury wasn't equipped to deal with cow thieves. If there were any more livestock thefts, he vowed to just avoid this jury stuff. Around 1877, Pink discovered that his cattle had once more been tampered with. Pink's determination that Merritt Horrell was the guilty party required little inquiry. Pink proceeded in search of Horrell while checking the ammunition in his always present Winchester Model 73 carbine, most likely chambered in. 44 minus 40. In Lampasas Matador Saloon, he located his target, 
and he shot him four times faster than anyone had ever seen a lever-action rifle shoot. Just before he was fired, he made the sardonic remark, Mr. Horrell, this is to settle some cow business. Pink met Ike Lantier, a Horrell cowboy, out on the range at the same time period. Pink started to work with his Winchester while Ike drew out a pistol. Lantier passed away instantly. A few days later, Sam and Mart Horrell were observed by Pink and a few of his cowboys bathing their horses at a creek close to Lamp Passes. Both brothers were hurt in the next, brief, fierce fight, but they were able to flee. In general, and the Horrell brothers in particular, Higgins had declared war on cattle wrestlers. Finally, the Texas Rangers stepped in to stop Higgins from killing the entire Horrell family. Both sides were compelled to sign letters of regret and expressing their desire to put the past behind them. Gunfights, though, were still a regular occurrence for Pink. Finishing the feud, Higgins rode down to Villa Acuna, Coahuila, Mexico, at some point in the 1880s to pick up some horses for which he had already placed a sizable down payment. When the seller arrived in Mexico, he asserted that he knew nothing about the horses and had never heard of a down payment. If the idiot hadn't threatened Pink with a weapon, everything might have been sorted out. The horse dealer was instantly killed by Pink's Winchester, who then galloped off in the direction of the Rio Grande. Pink took cover along the riverbank and engaged his assailants in gunfire until dusk, at which point he swam the river back to Texas. Finally, about 1900, Higgins relocated his family to the Texas Panhandle and started working as a livestock investigator for the sizable Spur Ranch. Soon, tensions arose between Bill Standifer and another stock detective. Both guys were fired since the ranch didn't want any difficulty, yet the trouble persisted. To end the dispute, Standifer rode out to Pink's farm around 1903. Pink hopped on his horse and rode out to greet the man when he approached. Currently, the standard procedure was to swiftly dismount and use the horse as cover while firing over the top of the saddle when two feudists came to blows while riding horses. Later, Higgins said that he had just been keeping an eye on Standifer's boot and that when it emerged from the stirrup, he realized that Standifer was about to fall. Pink outdid him by shooting the stock detective dead right away with a Winchester Model 1894 in. 30-30, which he had acquired by exchanging his previous Model 73. The management of this spur concluded that hiring Pink back wouldn't be harmful given that the gunfight had already taken place. Higgins returned to riding the range for the spur as soon as the grand jury had cleared him. However, Pink had already murdered his last man at the age of 52. On December 18, 1913, he suffered a heart attack and passed away suddenly and subtly. In the center of cow country, in Spur, Texas, he was laid to rest. Some would claim that Higgins was a violent man by today's standards. To judge history in terms of the practices and circumstances prevalent at the time is, however, considerably more realistic. Bullies took advantage of their neighbors at that time since law enforcement was somewhat understaffed. In order to keep the outlaws at a way until civilization caught up and established some law and order, it took powerful men like Pink Higgins. They were fortunate to have the Winchester rifle at their disposal to aid in establishing peace on the frontier. John Higgins died of a heart attack on December 18, 1913, and is buried in Spur, Texas.